be seated. I want all those that are young at heart, especially the children, to come up at this time. Come on, kids. Now, don't go too far. I want you to stop right here. Stop right here, Cannon. A A Armory, 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 Armory. Armory, come back here. Come here, come here, come here. Come back here. Back, back, back. Come here, come here. Come here, come on, y'all, come on. Follow me, follow me. Come on. If the adults look at you funny, don't pay any attention to them. Don't look at the adults. Just walk with me. Follow me. Come on back here. Open those doors for me. Come on, come on. Don't listen. Don't, don't pay attention to the adults, Richard. Okay. Look at this. Look, let's look around you. What do you see? Oh, good, good. Okay, good. Kendra, you okay? You okay? Right, follow me, follow me. You know, isn't that great? What did, what did we see out there? Shout it out. What did we see? What did we see out there? Presence. presence, lots of presence, right? Okay, come over here, come over here, come over here. What is this? What is this? What is this? Candles. Candles, right? Candles, they're lit. Where, where do you... Where is another place you see candles and presents together? Christmas. What? Christmas. Christmas. We're going to light two more candles, right, next Sunday and the next Sunday, and then we're going to light this candle. What's that for? Jesus. Christmas. Christmas. Okay, you know what Christmas means? Christ's birth, right? Y'all know that? Y'all know that? What, what, where do you see candles and presents. Where? Tell me somewhere where you see Caleb. Where do you see candles and presents together? Birthdays. Birthdays. Way to go. You get a gold star. Okay, come on. Let's go in here. Let's go in here. Candles and presents together, right, means a celebration, right? Celebration. Y'all know what a celebration is? You wear party hats, right? You wear funny hats. You know, you sing... A song, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, you know? And we're doing this on Christmas Eve for Jesus, right? Jesus' birthday. Huh? I had a rainbow birthday. When is your birthday? Um, Armory? Well, it's a long way to go. We'll celebrate birthday Christmas. Jesus' birthday, right? And that's a time where we have to plan for it, right? What do we do? William? William, it's so good to see you. What do we do when we plan for a birthday? We decide who's going to be there, right? Who's going to be there? God will be there. What, who else? Who's going to be at the birthday party? Do you know, Carter? Brendan, who's going to be at the birthday party? Who, who's going to be at Jesus' birthday party? What? Family? What did you say, Carter? Can you interpret for me? Shepherds. I shepherds. Think. Shepherds will be at the, that's what you said? Shepherds, right? Well, they're going to be there, aren't they? Shepherds? Right? Okay. Okay, now, who else is going to be there? Mom and Dad will be there, right? Especially Mom, because she's going to give birth to the baby, right? There are going to be some others, like some animals, maybe? Camels, rabbits, you know, whatever. Oh, rabbits, that's that other holiday, isn't it? Okay. Now, listen. Hey, I'm on a roll here. Don't laugh. Listen, this, okay. We decide what we're going to do at the birthday party, right? There'll be things like gifts. You want to give gifts, right? What, what are the gifts that we're going to have for the birthday party? What's one gift? What? What? Gold. Gold, right? What else? What else? What? Myrrh, somebody said. Okay, what's the other one? Frankincense. Okay, come on, I'll give you. We're going to plan this birthday party. We've got to do it right. And we're going to have candles. Okay, here's the, here's the story. This is what I wanted to tell you, but I was having so much trouble getting you all to answer the questions, is that we can celebrate Christmas birthday every day of our lives. Did you know that? Jesus' birthday. You know how you do that? It's okay, Bridget. I'll take care of them. Here's how you do that. You give away. That's why those presents are out there. We're giving away to people we don't even know. What? This is what you're getting. Okay. You can hide back here. Okay. 
You can hide through the whole sermon. Just stay right there. Hide. Get down underneath there. Okay, here. Anybody want to stamp? Okay. Okay. All right, so give every day, and it's, it's what we do to celebrate Jesus' birth. Okay, so find somebody to give to every day. I mean, you, who want, you, want, you want a stamp? You want a heart? Well, God gave you a heart, so we'll see if we can get you a heart. Okay, because you're so cooperative, you're going to get this heart. Your hand's not even big enough for the heart. There you go. All right, go. Father, make us the masters of ourselves that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I think I forgot to turn off my iron and I'll be back in about 20 minutes, okay? <laughs> Y'all ever do that? You ever, you ever forget something? You say, oh, maybe you're going on a trip and you're about halfway down the road and you say, oh, I think I left the iron on, right? You ever do that? Yeah, and, and sometimes when things are really stressed, or the, there's so many things going on, because you've got to plan for a trip, right? You've got to plan for a trip. Oh, Christmas is coming, right? Do you do know that? He's making a list, and he's checking it twice, and he knows you've been naughty all year long. Amen. Okay. Now, and his wife knows too. <laughs> okay. But when things are real busy, you know, you want to get everything right, right? You want everybody to be in their place. You want the decorations to be just right. You want, <laughs> you want the lessons and carols to come out flawless. You want uh, all the people to come show up for lessons and carols and all the services and the, Lenten, the Advent series and all these things. And you're trying to think of everything. And sometimes you get ahead of yourself, right? You ever notice that? You're, you, oh, I better do this right now, right? even though it's only Advent 2, right? It's not Christmas yet, right? Yet we're singing Christmas carols at Thanksgiving now, right? Did y'all, did y'all sing any Christmas carols at Thanksgiving? Well, I bet some people were because the decorations and stuff went out the week before Thanksgiving this year, right? Pretty soon it'll be Halloween and we'll be getting Halloween out on uh, New Year's, right? And we get ahead of ourselves. This morning I read the gospel. I wasn't even supposed to read the gospel. Father Sam was supposed to read it. I do this to him all the time. And I read the gospel reading for next Sunday, right? Which for me is a much better rendition of John the Baptist because he calls the people that have come to see him, you brood of vipers, right? We'll do that next week though. But, but I was ahead of myself, right? And, and we get like that, and we got to slow down. That's what our Edwin series is about, slowing down, right? I have a friend, and I've known him since I worked for Brookwood Hospital. I started working at Brookwood and worked my way up until I was working for the corporate offices. They had 17 hospitals, and I met my friend Doug. And Doug and I got to go on trips together sometimes. We got to go to Orlando once, and... Uh, I put in a landscape, he put in some construction work, and then we would go out to dinner together. And one night we were having dinner at the Lake Buena Vista area, which was brand new, had just been built for the employees of Disney World. And we went there and we were having dinner and we were talking about work. And we were talking about how the corporate bigwigs always get a little upset about every little thing. Uh, and they sometimes use fear to motivate, right? Does that work? Fear, fear doesn't work very well as a motivator, does it? I mean, we may do it, but we won't like it, right? And we may actually find some way to sabotage it, right? I mean, that's what happens when fear is used as a motivator. And my friend and I were talking about this and making jokes and everything. And he said, well, you know, Steve, he said, what's the worst thing they can do to you? Take away your birthday? Right? And, and so that became like a little catch line for us. Wherever we went, we'd always say, well, you think they'll take away our birthday now? I told this at the first service, and one of our uh, former military men told me a story about how uh, this guy got in trouble with his CO, and uh, he was on a boat out in the, the Pacific, right? 
and he uh, did something really wrong and he was going to get punished and they offered him all the punishments. He was going to be docked a pay, month's pay, uh, uh, you know, whatever, all these things. And he thought, this is a joke. They can't do anything to me. You know, I don't need any money. I'm on a ship. Right? So take, take away my money. He said, the worst thing they can do to me is take away my birthday. Well, the CEO overheard it. And during the night, the next day was his birthday. During the night, they went over the international date line and he lost his birthday. <laughs> so the worst thing that could possibly happen to you is you could get your birthday taken away from you, right? And there's a lot of people in our world today that they, they specialize in that. They're, they're trying to take away people's birthdays. And that's not good. And it leads us to darkness. Have you ever been in a dark place? Uh, where you just really couldn't function? You ever get that way? So dark that you just couldn't make a decision on anything, whether to tie your shoes or not tie your shoes, right? The people of Israel in the day that Jesus came into the world were in a dark place. They had been for a long time. They had had an oppressive regime, one after another, that oversaw their daily lives. Uh, They would tax them beyond their, their ability to pay throw them in prison if they didn't pay. There would be uh, moments where someone might wake up in the morning and notice that one of his loved ones had been taken away, never to return again. Infant mortality was high because medical care was weak. The Israelites knew darkness. They knew it for many years. And into that darkness came John the Baptist. And he says, repent. Repent. And then next week he says, you brood of vipers, which, you know, that's not very nice, is it? But anyway, that's next week. In this week's gospel, he's saying, repent, right? Change, turn around, repent. And he's shouting it. You know he's shouting it because there are great crowds of people that have come to see him. In one of the gospel renditions, it said all of of Jerusalem came to see him. And he's Speaking with a loud voice, repent. You in the back? I know why you sit back there. But I'm watching you. (laughs) Repent, John the Baptist says. And these people are in great darkness. You ever wonder why anyone would leave their secure state, their home, and go out into the wilderness to see someone that shouts at them? Right? Now, what do you think the reason for that was? Because it said all of Jerusalem went, you know, which meant a lot of people went, right? And yet they were out there, and John's telling them to repent. Well, I think the reason they were there is because the world had failed them over and over again, and they began to feel the darkness more and more, and they wanted something different, they wanted a change. And the words repent were good for them. Jesus came into the world at a difficult time. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. And this marks the beginning of my 16th year here in this place. I started Advent 2 15 years ago. So we're going to celebrate, right? We've got candles, we've got presents back there. We've even got a great performance that they're doing just for me today. Thank you very much. Fifteen years ago, I came here and I was preaching in there, in which now known as Grumman Hall. And I would, gave my first children's sermon while I was there. And if you were there, you remember that I told the children, well, some of you were there, I know. Were you there? Some of you nodding. There wasn't as many people back then. You know, what? we had a hundred and something at the first service, and it looks like we're close to that tonight, at this service, I mean, and we'll have probably 380 tonight, right? Because they're all going to come from both services, right? And then other people, they're going to bring friends. Well, there was a lot less back then. And I got down on my knees and preached the children's sermon to the kids, and I told them, I'm going to teach you how to fly. Do you remember that? Anybody there? Nobody. All brand new. So God replaced them all. And then I told the adults in the adult sermon, I'm going to teach you how to fly too. 
Now, some people thought that was metaphorical. That's, he said, no, that's not. I said I'm going to teach you how to fly a minute, right? Now, we've attempted to fly. We've gotten pretty good. But back then, I got here, and there were some, uh, some mountains, right, and valleys, and things weren't quite smooth. We, do you know we owed $350,000 when I came here? And when I walked in the door, I knew that already, and I saw the bell tower. I said, this is a piece of cake. Any church that will build a bell tower and take on $350,000 debt is either nuts or they've got vision, right? And I bet on the vision part, right? And I came in, and the budget was flatlined. Stewardship hadn't even begun, and it was December the 1st. I'm going, I like these people. They're a challenge, right? And we began to work, and we began to dream dreams, and I put on the doors. If you can dream it, do it. Do you remember? Do you remember some of you? The idea is, if you can dream it, God will give you the resources to do it. Do you believe it? Do you believe God? Didn't he say that? God said that. He promised us lots of things. And Jesus came into the world in the middle of darkness. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to fly. But sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. Sometimes the world just seems like it's crashing in on us. And it's so dark, we think somebody has already taken away our birthday, right? You ever get like that? I know I have. You get to a point where you just can't move. You can't go another step unless somebody helps you. Somebody puts you on their shoulders and walks with you. This uh, year has been a rough year for the grooming household. We've had a lot of things that we've had to deal with that have been challenges. Mountains, valleys, right? My uh, son-in-law has decided he doesn't want to be married to my daughter anymore. And uh, my daughter came for Thanksgiving. And we were getting busy to go out and buy presents for the angels, the ones that we bought. I didn't buy all those out there, although I tell everybody I did. So the, uh, we're going to go get angels. Come on, kids, let's get ready. And my seven-year-old, who knows his daddy's leaving, and it's Christmas time. You ever had that happen to you? You're about ready. It's about ready for Christmas. It's like this happens all the time. It's about to be Christmas, and all of a sudden the boss comes in and said, I'm going to have to give you your notice. It's time to leave. We're downsizing. That happens all the time. I have dealt with parishioners that have had that happen to them so many times, it hurts just thinking about it. And here, this man wants to leave his wife and three kids so he can go pursue something else. And the kids know it. And we're trying to get ready to go get presents for the kids. And my seven-year-old grandson, who I love, a great kid, he ain't got his shoes on. I said, get your shoes on, son. Tie your shoes. He says, I don't know how to tie my shoes. You think he knows how to tie his shoes at seven years old? Don't you think he knows how to tie his shoes? Right. He had to have grandpa tie his shoes, right? He knew how to tie his shoes. It wasn't about the shoes at all. It was about grandpa make the world slow down. Make it stop for just a second so I can catch my breath. You ever get like that? Where things are just happening so fast and you're saying, I need a break. I need, I need world, just stop. One of the things I know about pastoral visits is when I go and people are dealing with something really heavy, they, they want the world to stop. You know, my, my spouse just died. I just got a divorce. Can you stop the world for a second, Father Steve? Well, I'll do my best. Let's pray. That's about all I can offer. But that's pretty darn good. Fifteen years ago, I came here, and things were like, I mean, it looked bad, it looked dark, right? And I said, we're going to learn how to fly, right? And we've attempted to fly. We owed $350,000 back then, and now we owe $400,000, and we're going to build again. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. You're not going to do that, really? Why would you do that? Well, God wants us to, I guess. I mean, that's the only explanation I can give you. But I know how to tie shoes. Can you stop the world, Grandpa? Repent, John the Baptist says. He's come into the darkness, and he says in the wilderness, repent. Now, I want you to think of this wilderness area as more than just a place you go out and 
get a little respite from the world. The wilderness is a place where we go sometimes in our heart, in our heads, when things are dark. And we're out in the wilderness and we want a word from God. We want to hear something that will make things better. Leo, I love you. Let me tie your shoes. And we go out in the wilderness and looking for something different. Something different that will make things better. And we hear these words. Repent. Repent. What was, uh, what was John talking about? Do you know? When he's telling us to repent and and trust me, that's the word for us today, right? Point at yourself and say, repent. Because we always need repentance. Repentance just means, it, the word is metanoia in Greek, and it means to turn away the way you're thinking into another way, right? Change the way you're thinking. Change the way you're looking at things. These people had thought that God had abandoned them. Where is our God? And some, the wise men of the world at that time said there's going to be a Messiah. God's going to send a child. We read about it today. It's going to happen. And it's going to be good news. And it's going to make things better. What's the worst thing they can do to you? Take away your birthday? God says, I'll give you, a, I'll give you something better. I will give you a new birthday. I'll give you something you can celebrate forever. What does John mean when he say repent? This is what I think he means. John is saying, look, I want you to take God seriously. Now, now, when he says that, he doesn't want you to get all somber look on your face, right? He wants you to be smiling when you hear that. He wants you to say, yes, I want to repent. I want to take God seriously. And, and then John says, and this is what's going to happen. If you take God seriously, you'll find your world's going to be better. Repent. Believe in the good news. Believe that God really keeps his promises. And God does keep his promises. That's the good news. But here's even better news. We're going to celebrate Christmas on the 24th. We're going to celebrate tonight, really, the lessons and carols. Thank you, choir. Y'all are wonderful. You know, you know that 15 years ago we didn't have the lessons and carols like we have today, did we? No. We didn't have that nice organ over there, did we? No. We didn't have this nice building, but we still celebrated it. And you can do that. That's the good news. That's what Jesus tells us over and over again. You, could, you come with me. Set, your, set yourself in my boat, and I'm going to get you somewhere where you will be happy all the time where the valleys will be smoothed out, the roads will be made straight, and you'll get that time you need because time will be no longer important. God keeps his promises. That's the good news. And he does the first step in sending his son into the world to give us a new birthday to celebrate so that no matter what the world does to you, no matter if they take your birthday away or not, we still have Jesus, and Jesus says, come, follow me, and I will lead you into the kingdom of heaven, and that is good news. Those with ears to hear, let them hear.